good morning, everybody. Everybody's well. Happy Wednesday for those that are here live. Those here any of the week, thanks so much for being here. I am honored to be together with you again. We've been talking about this concept of influence, of making a difference in someone else's life. It's not relegated only to those that have the title. Man, if I heard that growing up, people that get to speak are one of three people, teachers, rabbis. It's just not true. People, every one of us has an opportunity to, to be a blessing, to be empowering for others. And we're constantly in that state, constantly dealing with people, whether it's people that we see in our lives, randomly, the person on the train that's punching your ticket, whether it's the people that we are related to or that we work with, people coming for advice, people not coming for advice, but should be coming for advice. People coming at us with love, people going at us with their hand, with their dukes up. We're always in a space of interacting with people. And our ability to understand how to navigate that is critical because at the end of the day, if all we're doing is pushing back, it's gonna be a whole life of battling. Do we sit with a family where like, they're having the same fights that they had since they were like little? It's the same stuff. It's the same stuff. Friends, like it's, a, it's you know, you ever, you ever work at a, at a place for long enough and like, it's the same stuff. Like <laughs> just, just a new day. It's the same stuff. There's like no human evolution. Same stuff. Round and round. It doesn't get us anywhere. It doesn't get us anywhere to continuously have the same conversations with different details year after year for relationships to not evolve over time. You're living with somebody and you're having the same argument for a decade. How is that helpful? How is that like, how does that work? It's because we live in a space where we are only seeing the word world from the surface of the words that we use. So if I keep on correcting somebody in their actions and I think that, oh, they're going to get the advice because I've said the advice, I've transferred information to their brain, why aren't they getting it? Why aren't they understand? I, I'm, the information is correct. Why aren't they getting it for? Teachers are like shocked. Like, don't you love math? And kids are like, no, we hate math. I'm transferring math to you. Don't you see it? And the kids are like, yeah, no, we hate it. And as soon as we're done with the subject, we're never going back to it. I hated biology. Hated it. And chem just did. As soon as I was done, I ran. I ran. It doesn't mean that the subject of biology and chemistry isn't fascinating. It's that when I look at it from the from the surface, and if it's and I'm not blaming anyone who's done that way, but that's life. When when it's when it's when the information is just a transfer. It doesn't mean that I'm going to connect to it. I don't care how important the person thinks it is. When we're engaging with people, the words aren't what's most important because the words that we use are garments for the thoughts and the feelings that we have, which are garments for the soul and the spiritual energy which we possess. So if you really want to make a difference in somebody else, if you really want to give them something, yeah, you got to use words because we live in this world. But the, the question is not just the words that you use. The question is the intention behind the words. When I say what I am saying, why am I saying it for? Am I saying it because I want to give to you? Because I want to benefit you because I believe in you 
because I want to empower you? Or am I saying it because I don't believe in you and I want to convince you and I want not convince you for your benefit, convince you because I'm right. And I want to enable you to succumb your will to my will because you should. I'm your parent. I'm your teacher. I know this better than you know this. You see the difference? See the difference in somebody trying to explain something from a place of this person in front of me is incredible. And I want them to understand this aspect that I may understand because I want them to be more incredible. Or I want them to at least understand what I understand so they can enjoy the things that I enjoy. Or maybe there's an insight that I have. But it comes from a place of my intention is to give to this person where they're at for them versus the place of I know better. So I'm going to wait for them to be quiet so that I can convince them that I'm right because I know I'm right because I know better than them. And so as the person hears the words, there's like this do you ever feel this way? Am I the only one that feels this way? Like, do you ever feel this way where like someone tells you something and like, you just sort of sense, no, you just reject it. And you don't know why you're rejecting it for it. Cause you're rejecting it because the intentionality of it is, is not for your benefit. Especially thank you, Bhatia in political arguments. That's why you see people in political arguments and like, they don't change their position. Do you ever like watch a debate and someone's like, oh yeah, you're right on healthcare. I didn't, I didn't do the math. Yeah. We're going to get back to you on the healthcare program because the guy I was debating made a great point. And I'm going to go back to my guys and you ever, you ever see a debate ever do that ever? Of course not. Cause I don't want, I don't really want to, I'm not debating you. I'm just trying to convince you. I don't respect your opinions. I don't respect the way you see the world. I just need you to understand how I see the world. Because I live with my in my head my whole life. So is there somebody else not like me? Right? And if we've done I don't know if we've done this before, but you know, in our family, we've been I've been telling this over this thing for a long time. Family's almost like a joke where like everybody thinks they're in the middle of everything. You know that? You ever notice like everyone's in the middle to the right, they're extremists and to the left, they're barely even pulling their weight. You know that politically they've figured it out. And to the people that are the right of them or whatever, the right, not conservative or liberal, but to the, to the extreme side is like they're extremists and to the left. It's like, forget religiously. We're in the middle. We figured out how to balance the physical world and the spiritual world, the people that are like doing more than me, like, can you relax? Relax. You don't got to do that much. People do less than me, like, really? Are you even part of this religion? You know what I'm talking about? Working out. Everyone that does more, you're like, whoa, that's extreme. You don't got to not eat that. Not working out as much, like, really? Like, don't you want to take care of your health? And even as we, even as we change our positions, right, even as we become more or less healthy, more or less connected, more or less, even as our positions change immediately, new people become extreme and new people become basically not involved. It's an amazing thing. No, we seem to always be in the middle of everything. It's like amazing how we're able to like balance both sides so perfectly and to have this blend of all the all funnels, right? It's like as if God's over our head going, how did you figure out the golden path? Like, whoa. And you're like, I know, I don't know how I did this. Like, but I'm happy I did. And you must be looking down and going, wow. These, he, he, she's on the golden path. He's on the golden path. Like, and you're like, yeah, we know that. But I mean, the rest of the world's gone crazy. You see people that say these things, the world's gone crazy. Of course, they've haven't gone, they haven't gone crazy. The rest of the world has gone crazy because they see the world clearly. Now, I know how the world is supposed to be. And then if you really want to, like, take it to the next level, then you play the game of, like, you know, in, in, in 
you know, I, I call it, I call it the Shabbos table politician, right? Because usually when you're running a week, you don't have time to, to, to think. So usually around the Shabbat table, that's when you can pontificate the most. So that's when you become the politician, right? If I'd be the president of the United States, like this whole thing wouldn't be an issue. If I would be the prime minister of Israel, I mean, come on. Like if I would be just king of the world, like if God would just give me his scepter for like a week, like I'd figure this stuff out. Like, and when you say it, you're so clearly convinced that you're right. I know exactly what my child needs. I know exactly what she should do. I know exactly what the, where the community went wrong. I know this whole dynamic, like, and we're like shocked, shocked. You know, sometimes I speak to somebody and they're like shocked that like the CEO doesn't come into their office and been like, Hey, I'm, yeah. I don't know what I was doing being in the CEO's office. Like I just woke up this morning and thought to myself, like, why me? Here's the keys to the company. Like, thanks for being you. And, and, and they're like shocked that like year after year, like they go to their reviews and their review is like, you know, you really should try hard. And he's like, what? Do you know how much I contribute? I was one of the companies that we work with. I'll never forget this. One of the companies we work with, they had succession planning, succession planning. So they did this exercise where they asked the people, like, what do you think you're in line for? And the amount of people that said CEO was like astounding. Like the CEO and the executive team had like three people in, in mind that could potentially be CEO. And like their employees had like, it was like 50 people were like, yeah, no, of course, I could be the CEO of this place. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why do we do that for? Part of it is because when you live in your own head, you process the world through your way. And because through your way, it makes sense. You assume that through everyone's way, it makes sense. So if you come from a background where you see people working really hard and you're a really hard worker by nature, you're like, why don't you step up and work hard? And you've come from a background where you see everything you've seen in your life is I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. If you have teachers and parents that have guided you to recognize how little you are your whole life and have somehow put you down always and somebody else shows up and it can you're like whoa what's with the ego man and both people i can and i can't are looking at the other going like are you even what's wrong with you you can't do that they said do this just do it do you know how many times this is happening now? Just everybody's, I'm a, do you know what's going on right now in the world? Masks, no masks. Social distancing, not so, virus here, virus not. Do you know what's going on? It's not a question of like science. It's so much deeper. You have some people that never listen to anybody. They're going to listen now. And you have some people that listen. They're going to not listen now. And they're killing each other. And they work in the same office. And they're going crazy because the people that are listening are going, are you crazy? This is people's health. People that never listen, they don't listen for anything. They drive faster than the speed limit. They do whatever they want. You think like the government says do something, they're like, oh, now I'm going to listen. Are you crazy? But they don't see each other from each other's world view. They think this is about a mask. It's nothing to do with a mask. It's nothing to do with the virus. This is how people relate to rules. But who sees it like that? Who sees it like that? Nobody. So the people that are focused on the rules are going, are you crazy? You're putting people's lives at risk. People that are non-rule focused is like, are, would you relax? We had it. He had it. She had it. Relax. And they're killing each other. No one's saying, wait, how do I see the world from your perspective? How do I share something? in a way that empathizes with how you see the world. Now, I don't know exactly how you see the world, but if I'm just, if I just stop focusing on how I see the world for a second and try to put myself in your shoes and my intentionality is not to beat you over the head with my ideas, but to actually engage you so that we, your energy and my energy can actually create a connection heart to heart, then the information will flow very differently very differently. What are you struggling with? Where are you coming from with this? I don't have to ask you a million questions. I don't have to cross-examine you. 
I have to stop thinking about myself for two seconds. I have to stop seeing the whole world from my own perspective and everything relates to how I see the world. I happen to naturally like these things. And actually, so just because I do, what? Why do, why do I have to impose my worldview on, your, on you all the time? I don't remember what it was like to be a kid. I don't. And as much as parents think that they know what it's like, they don't. They absolutely don't know what it's like to be a teenager in 2021. No idea. They could somehow cobble together what it was like when they grew up, which was incredibly different now. And do their I don't really know what's in the head of my teenager unless I stop and put myself in the head of my teenager. And when I speak to them, what I do in my words is I infuse in my words my intentionality, which is to make them great, to believe in them, to see the good in them, to try to look at it from their perspective. So when I offer even an, a minute of advice, the advice comes out of my mouth as a garment that is holding and containing so much energy that when the person hears it, they don't just hear the advice, it unpacks the energy and it gets into their soul and they feel like, whoa, that person it's, just feels different. That's the difference in how some people are making a difference and some not. There's nothing to do with it. Listen, their words are important. You got to say the smart things. But I got to tell you, we've all, we've, we've all been in a situation once where we needed some advice. We went to someone and they didn't give us much advice, but they somehow said things that really didn't shake, move us, but moved us. We've all been there. Or sometimes the intentionality is so much more important than even the words. You know, there's a rule. That when someone goes to pay a shiva call to somebody else, God forbid, you're not supposed to talk until the, the, the mourner talks first. You know, there's a rule like that. Because God's like, just stop talking for a minute. And if you ever want to know why that rule is important, go to a shiva house and watch some people talk. It's ridiculous. I was in the shiva house of a woman that lost her husband and a guy sits in the room and he's like, so how'd he die? She's like, what? It's like, and what happened? And then, and then what happened? So he, so he got to the hospital and he was... Wait, wait, did he already have the fever? And I'm like, is this happening? Is like, is this real? Is this, is this actually? And, and then, and then what? And this poor woman is like recounting every step of her. I'm thinking to myself, like, why is this guy doing? Because he's uncomfortable. And he has got to talk about something. So what is he going to talk about? It's about him. And how he sees the world. I'm sure he's a good guy. You know what the rabbis say? Just don't talk. Because if you don't talk, you're going to feel. And you let somebody else speak. And they're going to share what's in their heads. And you're going to see it from their perspective. And in this case, it's not the same. You and them are not the same. In this case, it's their Shiva house. And it's your job to listen to them. And when you understand what's happening in someone else's worldview, then when you speak, you'll know how to put the right intentionality, emotion, thoughts, into the words that you say. And you don't got to say anything. There's nothing you're going to say that's really going to matter. It's not about what you say. So many times we're scared to feel, so we talk. It's uncomfortable. You ever have that? It's uncomfortable. You know what that is? I don't know, how, I don't know what I'm feeling right now. Let me just open my mouth and just let everything stream right out. Sometimes the best thing we can do is keep our mouth closed for a few minutes and feel something. And realize that what I say really, it's important, but it doesn't matter as much as I think. Really what matters is what I'm infusing in my words. And we should never know of these things, but when you sit in a shiva house and you say, I'm so sorry for your loss with every bit of your intention that is so much more powerful than, and then what happened? When you're sitting in front of a kid who's struggling, sometimes it's so much more powerful to say, I'm so sorry for what you're going through, honey. I'm here for you. Versus, okay, and then and then call this person and call that person. Sometimes 
we're doing that to solve our own problems. I could tell you all with this. I can tell you, I know a bunch of husbands that have this issue. We did this before on the show a number of times. Their wives share an issue with them and they just want to solve it, solve it, solve it, solve it. My wife's like, relax, I'm gonna need you to solve it. I need you just to listen to it for a minute. Just relax, relax. You can't solve this one. Trust me. You, the thing that I'm talking about, no man allowed. You can't solve this. Here's what I want you to do. It's not about the nail. Very good. This is what I want you to do. I want you to listen. I want to put your, I want you to take your empathy and your feelings and your care and your love and infuse it into a few words and then send it over. I'm going to hear it. And what I'm going to feel now, I'm going to feel your love. And that's what I need right now. I just need to feel your love and your care. That's it. Don't worry about being smart and fancy. Just worry about being intentional. Sometimes the greatest advice we give is just packaging emotions and delivering it on someone else's doorstep. So they can open up the package and get an emotion. And that's more valuable than the words. All right, we'll continue. All right, everybody. Have an incre- Try this. Think about this. Think about this. Think about this today. When you're talking to somebody, slow down the words and infuse it with more emotions and just see how it feels and see it and just watch. Watch to see how it's received. All right. Have an amazing, amazing day. With God's help, with God's help, I cannot wait to see you again tomorrow. <laughs>